Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to use the geometric mean. Now the definition of a geometric mean is it's the mean of uh, n positive numbers obtained by taking the nth root of the product of numbers. So for example, let's say we've got a series of values x1, x2, x, x2, 3. Let's say it was just three values, x1, x2, and x3. We would multiply those together and take the cube root, n would be the 3, the cube root of it. So as I mentioned before, probably a good example here is to show some illustration in a comparison to the arithmetic mean, the, the regular mean. Let's say, for example, I have some stock. Uh, it's at $100, or maybe this is just uh, the growth rate of a bunch of apples. Uh, the first year, I'm starting with 100 app an apple tree that's $100, or stock that's $100. Um, at the end of the first year, it's $180. At the end of the second year, it increases to 210 at the end of the third year, it increases to $300. So each year, it grows a certain percentage. So in this example, it grew 80%. Um, basically, this value is 180 over 100 minus 1. So, bas so basically, uh, you multiply 100 times 1.8. You take off, you minus off the 1 here. It gives you 80%. So that's 0.8. Uh, same thing with the subsequent years. Uh, in this year, uh, we have increased from 180 to 210, so that's an increase of 16.7%. And the third year, it further increases to 42.9% from 210 to 300. Now, if we took a, uh, an arithmetic mean, uh, basically we would just use the average function. So if you're familiar with averages or means, basically what you're doing is you're taking the uh, set of numbers, you're adding them all up together, and then you're going to divide it by 3. So this gives you a, a value of 46.5, basically 46.5%. Uh, and so that's telling, that's telling us that uh, the average growth rate um, for those three years is 46.5%. So it kind of gives us a, a, a weight there. Now in reality, it's probably not an accurate uh, representation of growth because it doesn't take into the account of the proportion of growth. You're going from 100 to 180, and you're compounding it now. You've got that 180. You're not starting at 100 again to grow to, one, to um, 210. You're going from 180 to 210. You're not starting at 100 again to go to 210. So the growth is compounded after each term. So you're, you're basically going to, doing the growth from 180 to 210. You're compounding it from 180 to 10, not from 100 to, to 210. So that's one way that you have to think about uh, using the geometric mean, because that would give you a more accurate uh, measure of the um, growth per year. Now, to figure out geometric mean, what we need to do here in this example is we want to go ahead and use the geo mean function. So I'm going to type equals geo mean. I'll tab to kind of open it up, close it, uh, or to complete the particular function here. Now, the number I'm going to use is uh, this, this, also this series of numbers. But I'm going to go ahead and have to add a 1 to it because basically what we're doing is we're increasing, we're going to add a 1 to it. So, so 100 times 0.8 is going to give us 80. What we want to do is get to that value of 180, so we're going to do 100 times 1.8, and that's where the 1 comes into play. So what if I go ahead and select that and execute this particular uh, range? I'll go under Formulas and Calculate Now, or I can just press the F9 key, and you'll see that it calculates it. So it, the first set of number is 1.8, which is got this value here. The next one is 1.6, which is this value here. And the next one's going to be 4.29. So basically, it added the 1 to that. Let me go ahead and undo that, undo this uh, calculate now so I can get out of that. So I'll go back to what I had it before. And so basically, after that, what we need to do is uh, we need to close that. And then what we're going to do now is we want a minus 1 because after we have it calculate the growth rate uh, for each subsequent term, we'll have to minus 1 so it'll give us the proper uh, percentage. So with this particular function, it's called an array function because we are uh, putting a list of values here, a list of values here for this particular function. And this function doesn't take an array, but what we can do is we can use it to take an array by using a special keyboard shortcut, Control, Shift, Enter. And I learned this tip actually from uh, Mike Gervin from Excel is Fun. He's got a bunch of great videos on YouTube. So when I go ahead and press Control Shift Enter, you'll notice now it has completed uh, that function, and it's given me a percentage here. Well, it's given me the the result here. Let me go ahead and just uh, make that a little bit shorter. That's too long. Let's just go ahead and make it uh, up to uh, three decimal places there. And so that's the real value uh, that we're actually getting. So when we're talking about growth 
and we're talking about percentage growth and it's something that we need to take into the compounding effects of growth the geometric mean will probably be a better or more accurate uh, mean than the arithmetic mean. So if we were to go kind of backwards to kind of figure out how it actually works, we can go ahead and kind of play it out here uh, in, with the values here. So let's say, for example, I have my um, I have my first year here at 100, right? So if I do 100, so let me go ahead and multiply it by the growth rate of the arithmetic mean here. So let me go ahead and do 1 plus uh, the arithmetic mean here. It will give me 14651. And all I need to do now is go ahead and look at that figure and multiply it by 1 plus also the rate here. And do the same thing at the last one here. So that rate times 1 plus uh, the rate there. So this is assuming that each year it is growing at a rate of 4, 6, 5%. And you'll notice that it overstates the growth rate a little bit here by about 14.47. Now, if we use the geometric rate here, I'm going to go ahead and type equal uh, 100 uh, times 1 plus uh, 2.442. And then that gives me 1.442. And then I'm going to go equals this times 1 plus uh, the geometric mean again. And do the same thing here at the bottom, uh, second year uh, times 1 plus the geometric mean here. So basically, every year it's growing at 44.2%, and it gives me a more accurate figure of the 300 that we see here. So the geometric mean is probably much better usage of a mean if we're talking about percentage growth rate, whether it be finance or whether it be a growth of some items, uh, apple trees, orange trees, you're looking at the proportion, the growth, and it takes into the compounding effect. Now that was kind of a long example, and I want to try to kind of cement it down with another example, maybe a little bit more simple example, to kind of give you an idea why the geometric mean is probably better for than the arithmetic mean when we're looking at a growth rate uh, through multiple years and there's variations. So let's say, for example, that we have um, these two years, and we've got a growth of one dollar here. Right? Let me go ahead and remove that parenthesis. We have a growth rate of $1. And the first year, at the end of the year, it grew 100%. And of course, 100% of $1 times 2, is, it would be $2. And then the second year, by the end of the second year, we lost half of it, so minus 50%. So basically, we're back to 1. So let me go ahead and chart out the uh, mean, or the average here. So if I use the regular average, I'm type average. Go ahead and select that, double click, and select these two you'll notice that my average now is 25%. And really, when you look at our growth from $1 to $1, that's not really 25%. But if I use the geometric mean, equals geo mean, and I'll go ahead and select these two, and plus 1, parentheses, and then minus 1, and then use Control shift enter you notice that the geometric mean accurately described the growth rate. Really, it was 0%, because from $1 to $1, that's 0%, and not 25%. So there's how we can use the geometric mean, and two examples that kind of highlight why it's probably more useful than the arithmetic mean when you're talking about compounding growth rate in terms of percentages. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.